Well, hi there and welcome to Lakeside Church. We are an Elim church located here in the beautiful seaside town of Southport in the northwest of England. And we're delighted to welcome you to our online service today. Now, whether you've been a Christian for years or if you're someone who has no faith background at all but are curious about finding out more, we want you to know that you are really welcome here and our hope is that you'll find the service today not only uplifting, inspiring and helpful, but that Lakeside might in the days to come become a place that you too can call home. Now, the service today will be starting in around 10 minutes time and we're hoping that you'll be able to stay with us for it. It's gonna last for around 50 minutes or so and it's gonna include some songs that some of our band will lead us in, a few notices about some up and coming things in the life of the church and an encouraging message from one of our team. And we would love you to engage with us on whatever platform you might be watching this on through the online chat facility. So please don't be shy, drop a comment in there to let us know that you're here with us. And if it's your first time with us, then we would especially love to hear from you as we'd love to get a little gift sent to you by way of saying thanks for being with us today. And if at any time you've got any questions or would love to find out more, then please feel free to get in touch with us. You can head over to our website, the address is on the screen for you. And if you scroll down to where it says contact us, you can either tick one of the boxes on there that might apply, or you can type in your own message and we'll get back in touch with you. But we'd love to connect with you, so please don't be shy in doing that. Now, if you're someone who's interested in exploring not only the Christian faith, but maybe you've got questions over what life is all about, its purpose, its meaning, and all that kind of thing, then we run a course that's designed specifically to help you explore these things. It's called Alpha. You see, life is full of questions, isn't it? I've got young children and they're forever asking me all kinds of questions as they're learning new things and wanting to know why such and such happens. So much fun seeing how they view the world and all that goes on around them. And you know, that doesn't really change as we grow up and get that bit older. The questions might be a little different to what they used to be, but for all of us, we continue to ask new questions based on the experiences we have. And let's be honest, given all that's going on around us right now with this ongoing pandemic, We've perhaps got more questions than ever before. Questions to do with our mortality, the, the meaning and purpose of life. If there really is a God, then what on earth is going on and why is all this happening? If you're watching this right now and if you're being completely honest with yourself and you find yourself asking these kinds of questions, then I want to ask you a question right now. Why not take the time to join with other like-minded people and try and find out some of the answers to those questions that you have by joining with us on our next online Alpha course. Hey, what have you got to lose? And what's more, you can do it all from the comfort right now of your own home. And along with that, you'll meet some great people along the way. Now, if you don't know anything about Alpha, just take a look at this little clip that will explain it in a bit more detail to you. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather gonna be like? How am I gonna fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with. Is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, uh, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. My girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible, but the truth is none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken 
and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. Interested? Well, here's what you need to do. Simply contact us to let us know that you'd like to be part of this. The best way to do that is to go to our website, www.lakesidechurch.uk, and on our homepage, you'll see that box called Alpha. Simply click on that, fill in your details, just your name, an email address or contact number, press submit, and that will come through to us where Sue, who heads it up for us, will then get back in touch with you. It really is that simple. And if at any time whilst you're on the course that you feel that it's not for you, then do you know what? You can just walk away and no one's going to keep badgering you to get back on board with it. So you have complete control over how much or how little you want to do. That's the beauty of Alpha. So this is your invitation. We'd love to hear from you, so please do get in touch with us. Okay then, we've got just a few more minutes now before our service starts, and so now's a great time to go and grab yourself a cuppa so that you're all ready for it to start on the hour. And don't forget, if you've got any questions in relation to anything that's taking place here, or you'd simply like to find out more, then please do get in touch as we'd love to hear from you. We'll see you again in a few minutes' time.
Hi there and welcome to Lakeside Church Online. We are delighted that you've chosen to be with us today. Whichever platform you're watching this on, please let us know in the chat facility that you're here with us and where you're watching from. We would really love to hear from you. If this is your first time with us, we give you a massive welcome and to show you how special you are, we want to give you one of our sought after Lakeside pens. Hooray! All you have to do is connect in the chat with one of our online pastors and they will sort out getting that to you. I don't know about you, but I am so thankful that we are blessed with amazing worship here at Lakeside. So in a moment, I encourage you to lift the roof of your house as we enjoy our time praising God together. Psalm 89 verse 1 says, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. Let's prepare our hearts for what God wants to challenge us about when Pastor Richard brings the first part of our new series, On Your Marks. Esther's going to pray for us in a moment, but if you have any needs and you want prayer for them, why not let us know in the chat and our online pastors will pray for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity that we can come together wherever we are in the world and worship you. God, I just pray for each person that is watching this service today. God, whatever they're going through, whatever is going on, whatever kind of week that they've had, Lord, I pray that you intervene, Lord, that you touch and you make your presence so real. Lord, we just pray that you be with us as we have this time of worship together. And later, as we hear the start of this new series, God, I pray that you really speak into each of our hearts. We love you and we thank you for this time together. I pray this all in your wonderful, glorious name. Amen. Amen.
Be 
Yeah, Holy Spirit, come and break out across our lives. Come and break out across this town. We recognize that we can't do anything without you, that it's not by might or by power, but by your spirit. And so we open up our hearts to you today and say, come and fill us, come and minister to us, come and fill us afresh. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, in a few moments, we're going to kick off our new series that we're running with throughout this month. But just before we do that, let me share a couple of things with you before we then take a minute to say hi to one another in our Minute Mingle. Now, first of all, a quick reminder that in our post-service hangouts on Zoom today, with it being the first Sunday in the month, we'll be sharing communion together. So if you're joining with us for that, then make sure that you've got your bread and juice at the ready. And then to let you know that after today, we're only gonna be streaming our Sunday service at 11 a.m. and not again at 4 p.m. as we've been doing for almost a year now. Whether we start that back up again at some point, we're yet to decide, but with the numbers as low as they have been for some time, we're gonna pull that second showing for the time being. It will, of course, always be available to watch on demand as before. And then a reminder to all of our men that on Saturday the 19th of June at 8.30 a.m. we host in our next online men's breakfast event where we've got special guest Leon Evans with us. Now if, you've, if we've got your email address then you should have already received something from us giving you all the details including the Zoom login. So if you haven't received that and it's not in your spam or junk folder then do let us know and we can make sure we get those details over to you but it really would be great to see you on that so let's do all that we can to make that a priority as Leon will I know have something really relevant to say to us and then the last thing as always is to thank you for your ongoing giving of your tithes and your offerings the different ways once again are on the screen for you well that's the notices for today but just before we get ready to hear God's word I wonder over these next few minutes well over this next minute as we share our Minute Mingle. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Invisibility, omnipresence, being able to fly, whatever it is, we'd love to hear some of your answers on this. So over the next minute, drop them in the chat for us, will you? Are you ready? Come on, let's do this. Let me count us in. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Well, in just over six weeks' time, athletes from every corner of the globe, along with the world's media, will descend upon the great Japanese city of Tokyo, ready for the next instalment of the Olympic Games. Delayed a year because of this pandemic, these past months have given all those taking part the opportunity to get themselves in their best physical shape, with the aim of winning their particular discipline and becoming the proud recipient of a gold medal. And I'm sure that, like me, you're looking forward to it and will enjoy all the coverage that we'll get on our TVs during that time. And as you watch it, one of the things that you'll hear on numerous occasions, particularly when it comes to the track events, is the words, on your mark, as each competitor takes their place ready to run their race. The training's now over. This is their moment, the culmination of all their hard work over the past number of months, even years, the moment of truth where they can show the world exactly what they're capable of. And it's that saying, on your mark, that I want to take hold of over this new month of June that we're now in, and for us to go on a bit of a journey together in Mark's Gospel as we look to get ourselves spiritually fit and ready for this new season that we're stepping into as we prepare ourselves to venture out of lockdown and step into the starting block, so to speak, of reaching people once again with the greatest message anyone can ever hope to hear, the great and glorious news of Jesus. It's been a long 15 months, hasn't it? Even though during this time we've been through all four natural seasons, it feels like it's been one long winter season, a bit like in the Chronicles of Narnia film, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, if you've seen that. 
as that scene isn't there where the snow and the, the harshness of that winter season that they've been through begins to start thawing and where a new and fresh hope begins to beckon upon them. And I don't know about you, but that's a little bit like how I feel, that there's a shift that's beginning to take place as we gear ourselves up for what we hope will be a lifting of the restrictions that we face for what seems like forever. And with, it, and with that, there's an anticipation in my spirit that we're coming into a new season. One where we believe in that we're going to see God move like we haven't seen him move before. And even though some things might look a little different to what they were before, it's a new season we're stepping into. One that's filled with opportunities to, to reach out and reach into people's lives like we've not had the opportunity before now. And with that, there's a need for us to be ready for it as much as we can. And I feel like God is saying to us, both as a church and also as individuals, on your mark to get into training, to get yourself ready, in particular to become mission ready because when that gun goes off, I need you to run the race, he says, I'm marking out for you. I don't want you limping along or falling at the first hurdle, but to press in and for us to go deeper together. And that's what we're going to be encouraging us all to do over these next four Sundays that we have. Next Sunday, Pastor Paul's going to be asking you the question, what's in your hand? What is it that you've got that God can use to reach out and make a difference in someone else's life? The week after that on Father's Day, Pastor Matt's going to bring a message we're calling Believe Again, where he's going to be speaking about what it means to have a childlike faith and where we simply trust God and take him at his word. And then the week after, Sunday the 27th, which is also our mission Sunday, Pastor David's going to bring a message called Keeping the Main Thing the Main Thing, where along with some updates from what's taking place in Cambodia, he's going to be encouraging us to become mission ready as he speaks on Mark 16, where Mark gives us his version of the Great Commission, where we're told to go into the world and preach the gospel. But over these next few minutes, I want to bring us to the very beginning of this gospel and to Mark chapter 1 and to something that's absolutely critical and essential for us who are believers here at Lakeside today. And that's the importance of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And I want to say to you today, it's time to be filled. Here in this chapter, we read about a guy who we know as John the Baptist. He was Jesus' cousin. And he was someone that God used to prepare the people of the day for Jesus' arrival and for the time of his public ministry to begin. And here in this chapter, we read of John at the River Jordan doing what he was known for, baptising people as they confessed their sins before him. But then in verses 7 and 8, we read these words that someone is coming who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and, and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In other words, Jesus would send the Holy Spirit to live within each believer. You see, John's baptism with water demonstrated a person's repentance and their willingness to turn from their sin. This was the beginning of what you might call the spiritual process. Whereas Jesus' baptism with the Holy Spirit is one where the whole person is transformed by the Spirit's power, enabling them to truly and fully live for him. Now we're a Pentecostal church, which means that we believe in both the infilling and the outworking of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in that we need him not only to do the works God has called us to do, but to simply be the people he's called us to be and live the life that he's called us to live. You know, I'm reminded of a quote I came across a number of years ago by a guy who wrote that the average Christian and the average church are bogged down somewhere between Calvary and Pentecost. They've been to Calvary for pardon, but they've not been to Pentecost for power. Bethlehem means God with us, Calvary means God for us, but Pentecost means God in us. Another preacher once said that Pentecost is not a denomination, but it's an experience that every child of God should receive. And what I think they're saying is this, that if you want to live an effective Christian life, and if you want to fulfill the plans and purposes God has for you, be the person he's called you to be, then you need to experience and keep on encountering the infilling of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because without him, then at best, all you'll ever experience is mediocrity. And as a result, miss out on so much of what God has for you. And I think that would be so sad. And yet the truth is so many choose to live like that. We read in the next verses how Jesus, when he was baptised, was also filled himself with the Holy Spirit. We read the same account in Luke's Gospel, where he tells us something extra that I think is so important that we can never lose sight of. Luke chapter 4 and verse 1, it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you a question today. What are you full of? When people say to you that you're full of it, what exactly is the it they're referring to? 
I've been told over the years that I'm full of stuff. Some of it I wouldn't be able to mention on here because of its offensive nature. But today there's only one thing I want to be full of more than anything else and that is the Holy Spirit because when I'm full of Him, then I really have everything that I need to not only both know and love God, but to live the life He's called me to live. And not just to live it, but to live it well. Jesus said, didn't he, that I have come so that you may have life and have it in all its fullness. And let me tell you that you're never going to be able to fully experience that without the constant infilling of the Spirit in your life. It can't be done. It's time to be filled. You see, when you're full of Him, then you're going to be a more loving person because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of love. When you're full of Him, you're going to be a more forgiving person because the Holy Spirit is a forgiving spirit. When you're full of Him, then just like John was speaking about last week, you're going to be a more generous person because the Holy Spirit is a generous spirit. When you're full of Him, you're going to be a more joyful person because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy. And let me tell you that the world needs to see some more joyful people and some more joyful Christians, I remember years ago when I lived and worked in Birmingham, walking through the city centre one lunchtime, and I, and I saw some people singing about the goodness of God and handing out leaflets, inviting those passing by to come to Jesus. The problem was they were the three most miserable looking people you'd ever seen. And I remember thinking to myself, if that's what happens when you come to Jesus, then I'd rather stay as I am, thanks, and enjoy my life. You know, there should be no such thing as a miserable Christian. What is it the Bible tells us? Psalm 16 and verse 9, that in his presence there is fullness of joy. And so when you're full of him, then you should be much more joyful, irrespective of what might be taking place in your life. When you're full of him, you're going to be a more missional person and a, and a better witness where you're thinking less of yourself and more about the needs of others and reaching out to them because the Holy Spirit is a missional spirit. He is the spirit of mission. We're all familiar, I'm sure, with the book of Acts and how the Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and that radical transformation that took place of those disciples who were together in the upper room that caused them to leave where they were and to spill out onto the streets of a packed Jerusalem and where they began to vocalise and verbalise the goodness of God to all those around them and where Peter then gets up and preaches his first recorded sermon where over 3,000 people make a decision to follow Jesus. And then as you begin to read further on into what came next, you discover how the message began to spread and go further afield and where people's lives were getting completely transformed by the message that was being shared and where bodies were being healed and people were being set free and delivered from all kinds of things as the Holy Spirit began to move more and more through the lives of those individuals. You know, the book of Acts is called the Acts of the Apostles, but it should really be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit because... He was the one doing all of this, orchestrating the whole thing and manoeuvring the different people into place where they could see God move and where he made himself known in the mightiest of ways. He's the spirit of mission. And I don't know about you, but I know that for me more than anything, that's what I want to see take place here in our town, even in my life and across this whole area. And I believe with all my heart that this is God's desire too, that this is still his plan, that his church is still plan A. Let me tell you, there is no plan B, but he needs people just like you and me who are prepared to wait on him to make ourselves available for him to use. This is why the prayer meeting that we hold on a Tuesday evening is so important for us to be part of that, where we come together as one body with one heart, with one purpose, which is to call on God and stand in the gap of our town. You know, the church was birthed out of a prayer meeting. All that we read about in Acts 2 and everything that took place afterwards was because those early believers met together to pray where they encountered God and responded accordingly. And today, some 2,000 years on, he's still looking for men and women who are saying, here I am, God, use me, send me, fill me. It's time to be filled. You see, the truth is we can't live this life without him. And we certainly can't do any of these things without him. We try, but then we wonder why we keep failing or falling short. And so we almost give up thinking things are never going to change. We're like a car running on its last vapours, just limping along without any real power in the engine. You see, just dream with me for a moment. What if when you were next speaking to your unsafe friend that's going through a difficult time, that instead of keeping silent, you now had a courage and a confidence to speak up and tell them not only about all that Jesus has done for you, but that he can do the same for them too if they open it themselves to him. What if the next time you're in a conversation with a colleague at work and they tell you they've just been diagnosed with a chronic illness that instead of saying nothing, you now have the boldness to pray for them and believe God to come and heal them? I'm sure like me, 
These are all things that you would love to see more of in your own life, but for whatever reason, you don't respond in this way or you've lost some of that confidence that maybe you once had. You see, I believe that these should be the norm for us, but the reality is, if we're being honest, they're not. And it's not because a few thousand years on from when we see this first happening that over that time, God's power and ability to do this has somehow weakened or been diluted down. Not at all. My guess is that we're just not hungry enough for this to happen. Or we've settled for a form of Christianity that God never intended us to have. A bit like what Paul wrote in his letter to Timothy, where he's describing some of the believers who would be alive in the last days. That they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. In other words, they profess to be Christians by name, but in reality, they don't really live it out in practice. I don't ever want that to be said of me or of anyone connected with Lakeside. You see, the truth is we can't do this in our own strength. We need the Holy Spirit. It's time to be filled. The story is told of a log-in foreman who sold a farmer a chainsaw, guaranteed to cut down 50 trees in a single day. Well, a week later, a very unhappy farmer went back to him saying it must be faulty and that he only averaged just three trees in a day as opposed to 50. Well, the foreman thought to himself, something can't be right. And so he grabbed the saw, he pulled the cord and the saw promptly went zzzz, to which the startled farmer said to him, what's that noise? A lady went to the jewelers to get a watch fixed. The jeweler disappeared to the back and came back two minutes later with it working perfectly. Surprised, she asked him how he was able to fix it so quickly, to which he told her it only needed a new battery. Battery, she said. No one said anything about a battery. I've been winding it every morning. You know, that can so easily be a reflection of what our lives can be like, trying to do things in our own strength when what we need is a greater power working within us. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. That word power is the word dynamis. It's where we get our words dynamic or dynamite from. And we all know what a stick of dynamite can do. And this is the power that he wants to give you today and release into your life. Power to witness. You know, the remaining part of that verse I've just mentioned reads, and you will be my witnesses. And you just read through the book of Acts and you see how true that is. He also gives you power to overcome, to say yes to God and no to sin, to live a victorious and an overcoming life. You see, we know the verses that tell us, don't we, that we'll be more than conquerors and that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But if we're being honest, how many of us really live in that reality? In the next verses here in Mark's gospel, after Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit descended on him, we read that he was then led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Now, how many of you know that that would have been an incredibly difficult and challenging time for Jesus? And yet, if you look at Luke's gospel, he gives us a little bit more insight than Mark does in that not only was Jesus full of the Spirit when he went into the wilderness, but he was still full when he returned. What an incredibly important picture that is for us to grasp hold of today. Because here's Jesus who's just been without food for 40 days and nights, who's undergoing incredible temptations by the devil, but who never once gave in. And now he's returning back to Galilee, triumphant and victorious. And my question as I read this is, how was he able to do that? Because it would have been far from easy. His defences would have been down and he'd have been incredibly vulnerable. But you know, I believe the reason he was able to do that was because he kept in constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And he submitted his life completely to his control and influence and wisdom. And so as a result of this, he was able to beat off Satan much more easily because he was dependent upon a much higher power at work in his life. And you know, the same is true for you and me today. Romans chapter 8, which is all about living under the Holy Spirit's influence, tells us that when we surrender our lives to the Lordship of Jesus and invite the Holy Spirit to come and live within us, that sin no longer has mastery over us. Paul tells us something similar in Galatians 5 where he paints a picture of what life under the Holy Spirit's leadership is like in that he gives us power to overcome. And you know, the Holy Spirit is often referred to in the Bible by oil, especially in the Old Testament. It was oil that was used to keep the lamps burning, but it's also a lubricator. I mentioned before about when we run our cars on empty and what happens. You know, something similar happens when we don't put any oil in too in that the engine dries up and parts get damaged and it stops functioning like it's supposed to. It, it becomes creaky and stiff. And you know, I've, I've met Christians like that. They become dry, they've lost their joy, they become critical. Dare I say they become religious. But when the oil is poured in, well, that changes everything. 
And maybe today this is a little bit like how you're feeling dry and empty where your spiritual gauge, so to speak, is hitting the red and it's telling you that it's time to get filled up. My message is very simple to you today. If you want to live a more effective Christian life, if you want to have that closer relationship with God, greater courage in sharing your faith, believing that you're going to see God move in greater ways, developing a greater hunger and thirst for the things of his kingdom, even a greater joy in your life. And let's face it, after all we've been through these last 15 months, we could all do with some more of this. Then you need the Holy Spirit. It's time to be filled. Now, first of all, to those of you who might be watching this, and if you're being honest with yourself, you'd say that you're not a Christian. And what I mean by that is that you've never surrendered your life over to the Lordship of Jesus, in that you've never asked him to forgive you of the things that you've done wrong, whether that's in thought, in word, or in deed, then I want you to know today that he loves you that much that he died on a cross 2,000 years ago for you so that you wouldn't have to face God's wrath and judgment and so that you can begin to discover here in this lifetime his goodness and love towards you. And if that's you, and today or whenever you might be watching this, you recognise your need for God and want to invite him in, then I want you to pray this prayer with me that's going to come up on your screen. And then once you've done that, uh, let me know by either clicking the raise hand button if you're watching on the church online platform or by putting a praying hands emoji in the chat facility if you're watching this on either YouTube or Facebook. Will you pray this with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I recognise today that I've not been living my life for you and today I want to turn from that and invite you to become my Lord and Saviour. I ask you today to forgive me for all the things I've done wrong, to wipe my slate clean and to give me a brand new start in life. Thank you that you gave up your life for me. I now choose to give you mine. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you just prayed that for the first time and you've sincerely meant it, then please make sure you let us know as I asked you to and one of our online hosts can connect with you. But it's so important that you tell someone. But to those of you who've already made that decision, I'm asking you today, when was the last time you asked God to fill you with his Holy Spirit? It might be something you do daily, which is great. And please keep doing that if that's the case. But for some of you watching today, it might have been ages ago, maybe you've never asked him and you wonder why you keep slipping up or finding it a struggle to live for God and make wise choices and all that kind of thing. If that's you, then these next few moments could be the beginning of a whole new chapter in your war with God. Now, if we were meeting in person, then this would be the moment that I'd be inviting you to get up out of your chairs and make your way to the front so that we could lay hands on you and pray for you. But we can't do that right now. But you know, that doesn't matter because God's not limited by things like that. He can meet you just as powerfully where you are, through a screen, there in your room, whether you're in your living room, your kitchen, your garden, none of that stuff matters to him. What he's interested in, I believe, is your heart and whether or not you're hungry for him to meet with you. Because there's nothing more he loves than to give his Holy Spirit to those who ask. And so here's what I'm asking you to do, wherever you are, just open up your heart, maybe lift up your hands as a sign of surrender to him. Because I'm going to ask him right now to come and fill you afresh wherever you are. And even if you've only just invited Jesus into your life a moment ago by praying that prayer, then you too can do this. Now let's just get ready, shall we, to receive right now. And then pray this with me because it's time to be filled. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me and that you're for me. Thank you that there's nothing you delight in more than seeing me live for you and honouring you. I recognise that it's been way too long since I came to you and asked you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Please forgive me. But right now I'm asking you to meet with me right here where I am and to fill me afresh, fill me to the brim and to overflowing. I welcome your Holy Spirit in my life. Please come and make your home in me and to help me live for you, to make wise choices, to honour you with all that I have and with every part of who I am. Please take my walk with you to a whole new level, I pray, where I know your abiding presence with me. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as George and Dan lead us in this final song, let's remain open. Let's keep asking the Holy Spirit to come and keep filling us in these moments that we have together and then into tomorrow and the day after that. It's time to be filled. God bless you.
Thank you so much for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed your time. If you've been challenged by Pastor Richard's message and prayed the prayer of salvation, please let us know so we can help you as you step into your new life with God. Also, if you have anything at all that you need our help with, please contact us at lakesidechurch.uk. Don't forget we have our after service hangout Zoom starting straight after this, so why not grab a cuppa and come on. We would love to see you. Remember, through the week, our various activities. The prayer meeting is on Tuesday night and our different life groups as well. Check out our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram where you will be kept up to date with all the church news. Stay safe, stay connected and be blessed.